Today we sit down with Bethany Hamilton. She is an author, a wife, a mother, a health and wellness enthusiast, and a professional surfer. Bethany was born and raised in Hawaii where she was well on her way towards becoming one of the best female surfers of her time when tragedy struck on Halloween day, 2003. Then all of a sudden, it just like, I felt like a tug on my board. Right away I knew what's happening. Bethany was attacked by a large tiger shark off the coast of Kauai, where she lost her entire left arm. By the time she reached the hospital, she had lost 60% of her blood, but miraculously, she survived. You think you're gonna surf again? I think, I know. Just three weeks after the horrific attack that almost ended her life, with a bandage still on her arm, Bethany was back in the water trying to recapture that dream of becoming a professional surfer. In 2005, Bethany won her first national surfing title, and in 2007, just four years after she lost her arm, her ultimate goal was achieved when she started competing on the professional surfing circuit. More recently, Bethany found herself in the news yet again, only this time not everyone was standing behind her. Hawaii pro surfer Bethany Hamilton says she will not compete in World Surf League events because of its new rule that will allow transgender women to compete in women's surfing events. Bethany is the kind of woman that stands up for what she believes in, even when it's difficult. She is demonstrating that you don't need easy, you just need possible. So without further ado, Bethany Hamilton. Aloha, Bethany. Yo, nice <laughs> to be here. I had to throw in the aloha. We were talking yeah. in the car on the way over here. I'm all about using the, the pigeon when I can. I got my aloha <laughs> shirt on today. So he wore this for you. I came prepared. I love it. <laughs> but we are honored to have you here. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Really appreciate Thanks. it. Yeah, the, you have been one of our dream guests from the very beginning. Oh, thank like, you. Yeah, we were talking about like, who do we just really want to have on? And then Bethany Hamilton was just like, I have to have her because <laughs> we've been huge fans for 20 years. Uh, something really funny is Nevea, who's our oldest, their first daddy-daughter date was to go see Soul Surfer. Oh, <laughs> so, so sweet. That was their first day out and they went to lunch and they saw Soul Surfer and... Then we bought the DVD and watched it 500 times <laughs> and the soundtrack. So, yeah, getting to know the real Bethany has been really interesting. Aw, thanks. But, and you guys love Sharpay and we love Sharpay, so. Yes. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I had Sharpays through most of my childhood. Now we're dogless, but uh, <laughs> I've always had a thing for the wrinkly Rolly pulleys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love everything. Yeah, we lost ours about four weeks ago. Aww. He was 14. And so we are also dogless. But it was just, it's always so fun to see, like, any time that you had him, um, like, in your documentary yeah, or anything, yeah. to see the sharp paper, like, oh. Because <laughs> you don't meet very many people that have them. No, it's kind of more of a rare dog. But I feel like in Hawaii, there's a lot of, like, pit bulls yeah. and, like, just bigger dogs, like, more hunting-esque sort of dogs yeah. and then so my mom and I fell in love with Sharpays and we had a few over yeah. the years so. yeah yeah I grew up with them too I started getting <laughs> them in the 90s and then I talked him into it love them my favorite dog of all time for Best sure <laughs> yeah. you got to surf with one of your dogs correct at least one of your dogs um, you know, taking Sharpay's surfing, they're not exactly water dogs. No. So I was going to say, our dog hated was, the water. It was hectic. We were usually kind of, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, <laughs> getting scratched or yeah. um, just holding our dog on the board, making sure they didn't fall off. Yeah. 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 yeah, we got to see a couple shots. Was that your actual dog in the movie? Yes, so we had our dog act as the dog in the movie, Soul Surfer, and that was not um, great on the director because our dog wasn't super well trained, like, you know, set dogs. Yeah. <laughs> but it was fun and we made it work. <laughs> yeah, I think that's amazing. So how is it having somebody play you in a movie? It's interesting. I mean... I am definitely a rare human in that not many people are still living their life while having an actor play them. Yeah. So when we filmed um, Soul Surfer the movie, I was like 19 or 20. And so I still had a lot of life to live, you know? <laughs> and so it was weird picking out someone to play me. I remember at the time it was like, the top picks were Dakota Fanning, Anna Sophia Robb, who ended up playing me, mm -hmm. and a couple other girls. And 
Yeah, it's just weird because, too, a lot of young people will, like, become a fan of the actor mm -hmm. when I'm, like, the real person. Yeah. But I think, like, there's a bit of a crossover there, too. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine at 19. I know, they're so. it's so funny because, like, I, they watched the movie, our kids watched the movie, and then when we watched Unstoppable, they were like, Oh, that's Bethany Hamilton. So yeah. it was so different for them. And so they were very excited to meet the real Bethany Hamilton <laughs> because the actress that plays you, they're like, oh, hey, that's an Oompa Loompa girl or that's a, that's yeah. a Willy Wonka girl yes. that chews the bubble gum. So it's, it's so different. But yeah, it's been fun. Um, are you still competitively surfing? Um, yeah, I mean, I did an event this year, um, but I don't have any events on my schedule right now. I'm still surfing at a high level, but I also have four children, so I have like a unique season. I would say I'm like mostly done, but if yeah. an event pops up here and there, I'm yeah. down. I also prefer to compete in like really good waves, so a lot of the events aren't held in good waves. So I'm kind of like, okay, if an event pops up in good waves, then I'm excited to jump in. Yeah. What is your preference? What is a good wave to you? I mean, preferably on a reef. Growing up in Hawaii, we have just such incredible waves. It's kind of hard to leave because you go elsewhere. And like I did competing from the age of uh, 10 to now internationally um, over the years, you know, and we would travel all over the world and then the waves were always just subpar compared to where I am from and where I grew up and the type of waves I'm, you know, always surfing. And so, um, but yeah, I just really like strong, powerful reef waves in particular. And, um, but I mean, a good wave is a good wave wherever you end up going. Like I've had incredible waves all over the world. So yeah, yeah it's just such a different lifestyle or like, our dream is, you know, to not go to Disney World, but to go to like, you know, an epic surf spot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so amazing. You know, what's crazy is growing up in Hawaii myself is I actually became aware of you when I, at a very young age for me. I remember seeing you uh, competing. I think it was somewhere in Waikiki um, and like a, some kind of a, a youth event um, yeah. in like the early mid mid nineties, I guess. Give or take, yeah. it was on like Oceanic Cable. I it remember was probably watching China, it. like the China Umura Classic yeah. Women's Event, yes. or I did a bunch of Waikiki events, and I remember like it was crazy because this was before I lost my arm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I had um, I got on the news, so it was like big for me <laughs> as like a little girl, you know. And then I was like in the newspaper too. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what was so crazy about when I did lose my arm. I was pretty well known within at yes. least Hawaii. Yeah. Yes. And then even I had finished second in the national title um, at thirteen with with two arms, uh, 18 and under. So it was like a really wow. successful result for a 13 year old. Yeah. Yeah. And so my name was kind of already buzzing. Mm -hmm. So when my event happened, like it went like super viral, right. not social media viral, just like news, like yeah. the time. because at that time, I think my space was just getting going or maybe, yeah. maybe early days Facebook, but it wasn't yeah. really like a big thing yet. Yeah. yeah. It was just where people shared pictures and, and yeah. they had the song playing on your profile. Yeah. It wasn't like it is now. So can you even imagine what that wave of media would have been like had it been oh so my much gosh, later? Yeah. Now, but then it would have like been a wave and then it's instantly over like yeah, one maybe. day later. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I remember seeing you on like Oprah and Ellen and everything. You were so little. Yeah. You're just a little girl. <laughs> so that had to have been so scary. Did but. you enjoy doing all that media back then? No, I hated doing interviews, but I did have a heart for other people. And mm -hmm. so once I started surfing with one arm, um, I think just my story went even more viral because mm -hmm. people attached on to like that courage and mm -hmm. the, a bit, the willingness to keep trying and to overcome. And so it was amazing. Like I would receive letters from all of the, all over the world, mm -hmm. all different walks of life, all different types of passions, all different types of challenges. And so that really like encouraged me, I guess, to share my story. You know, I think my mom and dad kind of led me along too, like, mm -hmm. hey, look, we can be an encouragement, so let's go and share your story. Mm -hmm. 
And so eventually, fast forward, I went to writing my book, which I didn't really write it. I was a part of that journey, but it was like kind of like my mom and my pastor friend who is a writer. And um, in my head, as my teenage self was just like, all I wanted to do, you know, was be with my friends and go surfing. Um, But then I wrote, and then we worked on the book and I was like, okay, I don't have to tell my story now because people can just read it. (laughs) Yeah. But then there's the whole, like, you got to do a media tour yeah. now, little one. And you didn't know and that? I didn't understand that You're concept. So and yeah. so literally, I'm, like, flying to New York City. I did, like, 30 interviews or more, and I was so mad. <laughs> I was just so angry. It was like, get me out of this place. Like, I just wanted to go home and go surf. So... Surfing to me was so much more than just like my sport and passion. It was also like a little bit of an outlet and safety place and like an escape from everything on land. And I would still say the same thing to this day, like getting in the ocean. I'm lucky enough as a mom to like my hubby will let me get out there. And so I'll sneak away and get in the ocean. And it's just such a place of rejuvenation and like, I don't know, a place to be present and to just be creative and enjoy God's beautiful creation mm-hmm. and so from teenagers to mom life it's like my little safe haven yeah, yeah. that makes sense it's almost like the world can't get you out there yeah <laughs> and specifically like obviously we can bring things in our mind but when you're up and riding on a wave you're not thinking about the list of things to do or the mountain of laundry or the interview coming up you're just thinking about riding that wave and so I'm not like really like a new agey, but I, uh, I do love the idea of just being like fully present. And now with like technology and devices and the endless to-do lists and like the responding to emails and text messages and calling this person and that person, like I think everyone at times just feels distracted or pulled in some direction. Maybe it's social media, maybe it's binging TV shows, um, whatever it may be, like I love that the ocean is a place where I can't bring anything with me, especially when I'm up and riding a wave. Mm-hmm. And it's just a place to like kind of rejuvenate and um, kind of slow down. So I think for me, like growing up in Hawaii, I grew up with like a really raw, natural childhood. Like I wasn't on a device. I was like climbing lava rocks, diving into the ocean, looking for shells riding turtles like body surfing like doing so many fun things and I like look at our young people now and I'm just like what are we doing to our young children like now you see children on the side of the road like I'll just be driving by and then the other day we were we were heading to the airport we were in uh, the east coast Delaware and six in the morning you see two teenage kids just hunched over looking at their devices they didn't look happy Mm -hmm. They didn't look like they were being creative. They didn't look like they were healthy either. And to me, that's so devastating to see the way our people are growing up and the lack of um, inspiration they have for life, so to say. And so, yeah, I don't know where I was going there. I just like, I'm so passionate about being in nature because I think nature brings out the best of us, Mm -hmm. so. I love that. And I'm with you. That's everything I miss about Hawaii growing up there. Not that I was surfing on your level, but just spending time out in the ocean was a place of uh, healing, like you said, finding God and, uh, you know, just sitting out between sets, waiting on the next set to roll in a nice sunset, just, um, yeah, devoting that, that time and attention to God and creation and mm-hmm. being very grateful. It's what I miss maybe the most about surfing, yeah. for sure. Um, love what you had to say there about our young people. You are running a camp correct for moms and daughters yeah so the last couple of years i started a mother-daughter mentorship program and the idea is to like talk about all the hard subjects like anxiety depression health um dating drugs and alcohol um conflict the mother-daughter relationship and relationships across the board and then like adding in an in-person element. So some people come and do like a retreat or a surf day with me. And it's just been really cool to be a part of it. I have a heart for teenage um, girls and teenagers across the board Mm -hmm. because I have three boys. Mm -hmm. But I look back on my life and 
you know, I don't really like celebrating myself, so to say, but like, I look at 13 year old Bethany and I'm like, why was she so resilient? And I really attribute a lot of it to one, my faith in God and but two, like my relationship with my mom in particular and the way she and I um, bonded um, in my early tween and then teenage years and just just having that foundation in my own like home and my dad too. I mean, my dad was super awesome. He was just awesome in his own way. Like he was more like the sport dad, like, you know, he would do special like surf trips with me or, you know, we'd drive to the other side of the island at four in the morning and go surfing and um, just like special things like that. But um, yeah, I feel like culture now pulls children away from their parents mm-hmm. and their family and this unknowingly separates that bond and that relationship and so our young people are way less confident and way less um kind of sure of themselves so that when the conflict hits they're maybe not as resilient mm-hmm. as they could be Obviously, there's always going to be that resilient one, and we all have a bit of a resilient in us. But um, yeah, I just for me, I just wanted to recreate something like that, and just a, a space for like if mom is struggling with her daughter, it's a space for them to like devote time to one another and to like rekindle that relationship. That is so And beautiful. I have a lot. Of- Motion light. Motion oh, light. Is it motion light? <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> we made it go. <laughs> So I have like big dreams because I'm a mom of three boys too and my husband's amazing. And so I hope to do like a father son one day. Um, Plus all the moms are like, can you do one for my son and my husband? And so, yeah, it's been a cool journey though. Just seeing like young girls lives transformed. Like the big thing I've noticed is there's a lot of anxiety in our young people and depression Mm -hmm. and kind of hopelessness. And Mm -hmm. so trying to like re-illuminate hope in that in these young people's lives that are really struggling. And then sometimes I think moms just want to have a fun time with their daughter and like have a a space just devoted to them too. Yeah. I think what, what drew me to you and I think my daughters to you is that you are very resilient and you are very like this bad ours girl that stands up for what she believes in. But at the same time, it's, it wasn't just a story of like up, up, up success. Like you show when you're frustrated and you show, and you talk about like, I would come in crying. I would come in feeling defeated and that's real. And it's so helpful to hear somebody that we look up to say, I had those days too, where I just felt so defeated. And I, it, there's, it's just, brings a lot of hope because I have days where I feel defeated at the end of the day. And so it's nice to hear that it's not relatable, you know, when it's just up and away. And so I have that little, there's this little clip of you when you were still in the hospital, when somebody, I don't know who it was, asked you like, what's next, Bethany? And you just said, I don't know. Yeah. And it (laughs) broke my mom heart because I think to hear your kids say that you'd feel like you'd want to fix that. Yes, totally. Yeah, I know. My mom did such a good job of navigating that. But my mom actually didn't think I could surf again. Really? <laughs> my mom was like, let's move to the mountains and you can learn to snowboard. Or how <laughs> about you take on photography? She was trying to fix it, but she didn't think I would be able to mm-hmm. surf. And so that was like an interesting like little mom moment where as amazing as my mom was, she didn't she couldn't she didn't have the resilience mm-hmm. that even I had. And so once I set my mom, mind on wanting to learn how to surf, I uh, I was just all in. It was like, I'm going to try this. I don't know if I'll be able to do it, yeah. but I want to try. And so I popped up on my third wave, um, the first day back in the water, and rode it all the way to the beach. It was just like a small little simple mm-hmm. wave, but it felt like one of the best waves of my yeah. life. And... Then from there, there was just no turning back. And I, you know, I couldn't have dreamed my future. I just was willing to try and put myself out there and do what I didn't know anyone else had done. Like, I didn't know anyone with one arm, let alone a one arm surfer. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was very much like, you know, exploring unknown territory. Yeah. And you did actually end up winning at nationals, didn't you? Yeah. So I went 
back to competing um, the the following. Like I lost my arm in October, f- started competing in January, made the national final that next summer. And then the summer following, I won a national title. So that was pretty crazy yeah, um, and pretty cool. That had to have just been amazing after everything yeah. and working your way up to just be like, yes, I can do it. Yeah. And I was too, like I was competing against all the people I'd grown up with and you know, a lot of those girls went on to win national t- or world titles. So there was an element of like, maybe I didn't fully reach my potential that I could have if I had had two arms. But then I look at my life from a non-surfer perspective and just the ripple effect that my life has had on the world around me. And it's just so beautiful to see how God has taken something so awful and turned it into something so beautiful. And um yeah, I'm just grateful for the life that I do have. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful example to people to just overcome and to go for it. And do you ever sit there and wonder what would have been, or do you just not let your brain go there? Or I don't really go there too much because I don't really feel like that's very healthy. Yeah. Um, and I look at my life that I do have, and I have like four beautiful children, a wonderful husband, and just so much that I look forward to every single day. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I might not have any of that. And my life could be totally different. You know, I think of like my peers and surfing, I'm like the only one. Well, one of my friends has a child, but not many of them have children. And I just feel like that's like the greatest blessing in life is my, my children. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, whoa, what would my life have looked like you know, I guess I could think like that, but I almost am like, whoa, I hope that I would have even like, you know, hopefully had a child by now. Um, and anyway, I don't know where I'm going with that. Like, I just, I'm grateful. I feel like God's plan for my life is better than my own. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes he does disrupt our plans, doesn't he? He's, it's almost like he protects us from going down the wrong way even if it's like this horrible roadblock that you're like why would you do this to me but he's actually putting you in a different direction that is so much better yeah speaking of your husband adam he's from kansas originally is that correct so he grew up in kansas and he is supposed to be here but our little guys got sick and i don't know we didn't feel like dealing with a babysitter when they're sick they've been pretty clingy yeah and in a sweet and beautiful way of course but um He grew up in Kansas, and so now he lives in Hawaii, because once he met me, I'm like, I ain't leaving, so you're either staying or we're not going to work. It seems like that'd be a pretty easy choice, though. You know, (laughs) it it has its pros and cons. Like, I think it was a hard adjustment for him after, like, a few years. Um, Like, he did really well the first couple years. He was really immersed in the culture. He was working with an organization called Young Life, and he Mm -hmm. was starting it up on the west side of Kauai. So it's like kind of like the harder area of the island, like a lot of family abuse, a lot of hardship, and like I would say some quite a bit of child neglect. Um, And so here comes this big six foot four, like super loving, super friendly, um, you know, Caucasian guy. And he's like coaching football, he's doing substitute teaching, he's like fully immersed in the culture. And so that was kind of cool because I grew up, I was born and raised in Hawaii. And so there's definitely a cultural difference. You know, a lot of people don't really understand. And so it was nice when I met him, he understood Hawaii. He was like really thrown into the thick of it right early on. And, but yeah, I mean, it was a hard adjustment phase for sure. And, you know, being away from his family is for sure hard. But I would say now, in hindsight, he's stoked and he loves it. And he surfs a bit, but he doesn't have like quite the passion that I do. So it's nice for me because I get priority. <laughs> he's like, okay, you go surf, the waves are firing, <laughs> yeah. and I'll get leftovers if there's any, um, you know, anything yeah. left. <laughs> yeah, and he'll be on the beach so. playing with the kids or in the baby waves. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, um, but the thing is, like, being from Kansas, he's a super athlete, and then, he like, going into the ocean, he's super humbled, because the ocean is just a whole different ball game. It doesn't matter how athletic you are. Surfing is super hard, and so 
he was definitely humbled by surfing and um we joke lately i'm like our our almost nine-year-old's gonna be better than you any day now hun. <laughs> i saw him on the little wave yeah thing. i'm like he's good he's super good i'm like hun, you got like two more years and tobes is gonna be spraying you in the face it's amazing he definitely got mom's jeans yes That's crazy so i came up I was just, you know, going through my Instagram and I saw a photo of you standing there looking beautiful in your bikini with, I stand up for what I believe in. I was like, what happened? Because I knew like that it was such a strong post, but you always do everything with such grace. Like you can be (laughs) fired up about something, but yet you approach it without, I don't know, just so gracefully. I'm we need to learn from you because I get all heated and then I'm like, ah. Yeah. Okay. So something that we've talked about quite a bit, actually, on our podcast, we actually talked about you and Riley and was when all of a sudden Title IX starts changing. So you've already been through so much learning how to surf with one arm, becoming a pro surfer. You've overcome all these things. And all of a sudden you hear, you get an email saying, hey, biological males may be surfing against women. And like, what is, what does that do to your psyche is? Yeah. Well, I mean, we want to take a quick moment to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Delete Me, and share with you guys how incredible Delete Me has been for our online security and privacy. Melissa and I started telling you about Delete Me when we began using their services last summer. It's been really amazing how much of our personal information they've been able to locate online and also remove on our behalf. Something that we never knew before is there are data brokers out there that collect huge amounts of your personal identifiable information. They will use government sites, public information sites, and even your own social media. They will collect your address, your birthday, your social security number, and even your family members. They then package it all up, license it, and then sell it to other data brokers, companies, and even scammers. In just the last eight months, Delete Me found hundreds of different data brokers with our personal information, and their privacy experts took it from there. They've removed over 700 listings with our personal data, and the best part is they'll continue to scan the web, making sure our information doesn't pop up again. We signed up for the family plan. That way, all of our family members are protected under one plan. This can be particularly important when it comes to your elderly family members, as unfortunately, they are so oftentimes a target for these scammers. To try to leap me for yourself and take the first steps towards protecting your personal information online, just click the link below or go to joindeleteme.com slash GSL and use our code GSL to get 20% off all consumer plans. We want to thank Delete Me for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. And let's get back to our conversation with Bethany Hamilton. Well, I mean, we had kind of foreseen it coming because it was already happening in a lot of other sports. And I had sensed that it was going to come to surfing. But then the way it did come was just in an email one morning, like, oh, we, rule change, like biological males can now compete with females as long as their testosterone is at this level. And they've been taking uh, a certain sort of hormone replacement for like a minimum of three months or I don't remember the exact details. I'm probably getting that wrong. So you guys can go fact check yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, But so I received that and I'm surfing in an event in Oahu. And at the point at that time or and still there hasn't been any like major males competing in the main league of female um, performance surfing. So shortboard There is one male competing in the longboard division, and that individual is um, smoking chicks, so it's super frustrating. But, and that individual also won a male event, like, a couple years before he won the female event. So to me, that's just like, what in the world is going on, and why are we so okay with this? Um, But to me, I just, like, surfing is a sport where it no doubt like males surf substantially better than the females their strength their paddling abilities their strength in their legs and their torso is just substantially different like while there are a handful of girls that are absolutely like we're all like incredible in our own way and we're pushing our sport in such incredible ways but um I don't know why I feel like I have to even talk about that because it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Yeah. (laughs) But um, yeah, it's just wild to me. And it was pretty lonely. I was basically the only female surfer that spoke up about like against it. And the thing I've been pondering lately is like, why is everyone so scared? Like the fact that society is scared to speak up about something that is important Mm -hmm. and that does matter for a, a... you know, this next generation of up and coming athletic 
girls. Like, it's so wrong to me that society is at this point of like being too scared to speak what they believe because they think that they're going to be considered mean or phobic or, um, Mm -hmm. you know, an awful person. And so that to me is really sad and unfortunate. And I also feel like there's a need to call out like none of the previous women world champs spoke out for female sports. And I'm like, you guys literally have nothing to lose and they're not willing to speak up for the next generation. And so I think there's this element of like, you don't know what you got until you lose it. And so at some point, like if things don't change at some point, the girls are going to lose what they've got. Right. And so that will be super sad, but maybe it has to get to that point for the girls to realize that you can't just um, be lackadaisical and let go of something that you have just in the namesake of like the loudest voices um, who think that they can just control society. Right. Yeah, because it is a vocal minority. I think yes. we could all acknowledge that. And amongst your female competitors, was there it was the general consensus that, hey, this is this is garbage? Yeah, I think probably at least 70 percent are pretty like not for it. Maybe more. I would hope more. But, you know, some people just feel like they're being mean. And so they're almost like being brainwashed to think like, oh, I'm being mean if I don't include everyone. But the truth is, like, you're not being mean. Like, it's just simply not fair game for mm-hmm. males to compete in the female division. And you girls will be taken advantage of if you don't speak up because the strength differences are just undeniable. They are, they are what they yeah. are. Yeah. It's and the most infuriating part of it for me is that every time something like this has reared its ugly head is, is the, the silence amongst those who should be the most outspoken. So credit yeah. to you for, for in, in, in and I will view. say like the world surf league made everyone sign a non-disclosure agreement at the start of the year. And they, that we, they would, the athletes would be fined $10,000 and that they would be Um, removed from the world surf league so there is an element of like losing their entire career and there are no males in like the main surf league competing in the female division yet uh there are in the longboard but um yeah so there's kind of an element of like well there's no risk quite yet you know so let's just be like silent and milk it while we can you know (laughs) i always wonder when you see it happening in the high schools and the colleges it's I don't know how parents bring their daughters to an event that they know they can't win. Like, why not? Why doesn't the whole team just say no? And then maybe this nonsense Mm -hmm. would stop. Mm -hmm. Totally. You know, like, all it takes is everyone saying no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the lack of unity is the problem. And I would not allow my daughter to compete against a male if it was um, in a setting that was truly unfair. Mm Because, for example, I've competed in a male event. (laughs) Uh, in Bali at Padang Padang and I chose to enter that mm-hmm. event like sure. it's more of a specialty event and like it's totally fine like but like to take you know a, a potential like women's world title like that is a major issue and so, scholarships you see these scholarships, little yes. boys just smoking past the girls and yeah. different running events beating them by seconds and taking scholarships and titles away from them. And it just is so frustrating to see. And I don't understand where the parents' heads are at. Yeah, totally. I think it's just the society as a whole being very lackadaisical. And it takes work and effort. Like, I put more, like, mind time into that than I would have liked. Like, you know, I have a lot going on. I have four children. It's not like I want to be thinking about this subject all the time. And right. It's not like I'm out there campaigning all the time for female sports, but I just like make it known that I'm not for this Mm -hmm. and um, just try to empower our next generation to like know is a healthy boundary to have in the right time and place. And if you can't learn to say no, like your life is going to have a lot of problems and you will be taken advantage of in a lot of different ways. And so it's important to teach our young people to say no um, in a lot of different ways, um, you know, 
It's so true. And this is just one way. <laughs> yeah, that is so true. That's such a good thing to teach, especially our girls, but just children in general. The power of no can bring so much peace into your life. You don't do things you don't want to do. You're, yeah. <laughs> you don't find yourself at parties where you're like, why am I here? Like, there's so much power in no. Yeah. You're still learning sometimes. I know. Sometimes we, we I still end up at parties I don't want to be at. Going to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's really good at saying no to things, and then yeah. I sort of I try to be too, like, that's polite. the yin and the yang, you mm-hmm. know. Yes, it's yeah. ca- or you know, like I feel like my husband and I are like that. I'm like no, and he's yes. like no, and I'm like no. <laughs> Well, I thought it was really brave and I loved your one minute video. You were so respectful in it and you really just posed questions. You asked yeah, a lot of totally. very important and practical questions, but there was a lot of backlash from yeah, the World totally. Surf Organ. What happened? But there was a lot of backlash. I tried not to look because I was like, this isn't going to be good for my mental health. Yes, <laughs> and the fact that, you know, no matter what end of the spectrum of life you where your worldviews are at, like being mean is not okay. No. And I saw some really dark sides of people. Like they're like, I hope a shark bites off your other arm. Like, <laughs> I hope you're dead. Like, I'm like, whoa, oh just because I don't want males in female sports. Like y'all yeah. are insane. <laughs> but let's point out that no matter what side of the political spectrum you're on, there's mean people yes. everywhere, like Absolutely. in every, um, you know, end of the spectrum, so to say. And so the unfortunate thing is a lot of times the mean people are the loudest ones, but there's a lot of people in the middle that are actually just nice. And, um, but you can still have your opinions and your worldviews and, to me, it's like important to like talk about these sort of things with our children because you kind of don't want to become the mean, loud person, right? But you also don't want to be the hyper silent, mm-hmm. passive person. Yes. So it's like finding that balance in life and um, having these important conversations with our children because the way our society is going right now, and it's like lately there's been wars going on on college campuses fighting about other wars and i'm like wait how is this being productive like we're literally fighting here in the u.s about wars over somewhere else Mm -hmm. and while i think war is super unfortunate and i hate that there's death no matter what side of the war they're on i like i hate that there's innocent death um there's still like probably a better way to to you know work through these world issues um that isn't so aggressive and mean and harsh and you know maybe i've even felt like aggressive and harsh at times towards certain subjects but trying to work through that and like find my calm and peace again Mm -hmm. and like figure out a better way of facing these issues because it's not healthy for ourselves to also be like living in anger or you know, loudness or frustration. And so I feel like 2020 and 2021 taught me a lot about that because I don't want to be angry about things all the time. Like I want to be able to love my family well. And Mm -hmm. if you're fuming with anger, then that anger is going to come out in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. And so being able to work through um, our disappointments and our frustrations and try to, you know, find some level head. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's it's probably like so much of the conversations that go on inside of your home or in your yeah. own head even, but publicly the, I think you're right on the money. Like you, I know exactly where you stand. You're so strong in it. Like you're such a strong voice for it. <laughs> and sometimes it's just a picture, but it's like, yeah. And, but yet you do it in such a kind way and with yeah. so much respect and so much grace and they're going to get mad at you anyway. It doesn't yeah. matter how you say it. It's, it just doesn't matter. They're going to come for you anyway, but yeah. There's so many people behind you. They're just not, they're not the yeah, loud people and, on Instagram. And that was super interesting because I had people from like out of the woodworks that would normally like never say hi to me. And they're like out of the woodworks, like, thank you so much. So yeah. I feel like the majority was supporting me. Um, like I would just have the randomest people come up to me, like who normally would like kind of let me have my space. Like for example, we shop at Costco. Mm-hmm. And so Costco is like the place of social Um, function like you go there to socialize basically (laughs) in Kauai you end up like spending half your time in there talking to someone and so I'd like after I spoke out against males and female sports it was just like people out of the woodworks like thanks so much I'm glad someone's speaking up I was like you're welcome it wasn't very fun but we did it (laughs) 
No, it wouldn't be very fun, but it's so important. And there's so few people doing it that it's so refreshing to see. Yeah, I recently met Riley Gaines and we didn't really get to talk too much, but I heard her talking to a group. She read her book to a group of young children. And one of the things that stood out to me was like just how lonely she felt when she was started speaking out because she was like, one of the loudest OG originals like this is not okay and like no way am I being okay with this and she's been like she's you know full-on campaigning for female sports like politically and um like just using her voice and um just hearing her say that I was like oh I'm so sorry like in my heart and head I was like oh she was just felt so alone in her journey and so To me, it's just a reminder that like sometimes we have to do uncomfortable things to see good and change happen Mm -hmm. and it's not going to last forever. So that's right. Yeah, that's so true. I think you're just on the right side of it. But yeah, when I heard that they weren't even allowing your name on the girls jerseys, like um, so for a little context for listeners, you can pick a name to put on your jersey for the surf. Yeah, it's like a women's day of the year or something. And so they did a surf, surf contest where all the athletes could put like their favorite women on their jersey. And so the World Surf League uh, denied a bunch of athletes to put me on their jersey because all the athletes were like, most of them were pretty stoked. I think even mm-hmm. all the guys, that was the other thing. I was like kind of bummed none of the guys really spoke out either because I think most of the guys were not for it um but none of them spoke out but i guess their careers were on the line but even the former male world champs like female world champs come on like guys like you know that this is not okay Mm -hmm. and this will not end well for the females um and so yeah anyway i got What's it called? Cancel cultured. Yeah, I got full canceled by the World <laughs> Surf League, and they now no one allowing. can have names anymore. Bethany right? Hamilton was not allowed on anyone's jersey. <laughs> wow, that's so crazy because you're the most inspirational female oh, surfer. Thanks. I think surfer in the world, oh. and you've definitely got to be one of the most known names as far as surfing. I goes. think in surfing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's the natural, like kids are going to want to be like Bethany Hamilton. Yeah. So to be denied that is just insane. Yeah. It's weird. Right. For it's sure. I think that you've given people strength, even if they haven't spoken yet. I yeah, think things- totally. And like, I think over time things will turn back around, mm-hmm. but like, for example, recently I just try to like post every now and then, but there was a women's longboard event and the organization tried to say no to the, the male coming to compete in the female division but it was by the state law the organization would get shut down if they don't abide by the state law so at the end of the day actually like it's a bummer but while all the girls could say no the state might still um overpower them but at the end of the day if none of them show up then Mm -hmm. they have no event Mm -hmm. and so you know maybe if it gets to that point like hopefully the girls will just say no i think that's so great so how what is your what are you most excited about now moving forward where's your passion lie now moving forward oh i mean i'm just so like in love with my children and love spending life with them and serving them and just getting the stoke on their faces every day um My youngest is almost a year and my oldest is almost nine. So we just have like a really fun household. And um, that's pretty much like what I'm most excited about. Like, of course, I like helping other people. And so I have like my different programs. I'm working on some cool projects um, to support families to be together more and to like just empower them to live a healthy life mentally, emotionally, spiritually. So Soon I'll be launching the Bethany Hamilton Network. It'll be kind right. of like a, um, just like a, a step beyond social media, but a place to empower and encourage our young people and families as a whole. That's really neat. And then the mother-daughter program, hopefully father-son down the road, maybe podcasting soon too. So, but the nitty gritty of every day is for sure like motherhood and just trying to find time to get in the ocean. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. And be present there too. It's so yeah. true. You can't like boggle your brain down with all this nonsense, like the outside noise no. when you're with your children, because you want to be totally present 
they, as you know, with a almost nine year old, like they grow so stinking fast. Yeah. <laughs> and then with your fourth one, you know how fast it goes. So it's like savoring every single moment. Totally. I actually am feeling that a lot with Alea. I'm like, if she wants me to hold her, I'm holding her. Absolutely. If she wants to nurse, she's nursing. Mm-hmm. If she wants something, I'm like, Cook to kids. Yes, I love that. We were just talking about that in the car. He's like, I think you can spoil a baby. I'm like, nope, you can't. I'm like, fuck her eyes on. Like, I'm totally into that. I mean, like, I do tell her no like, <laughs> to a certain extent, but she's definitely like the baby of the yeah. family. And the big boys spoil her too. Like, they're so sweet with her. It's like heart melting. Protective brothers. That's gonna. That's so great. It teaches them to be good brothers, good fathers. Yeah. Good men. Good men. Yeah, yeah, I feel like my older two definitely have a little bit of that like natural paternal instinct. Like the way they treat her is just so sweet. That's awesome. So sweet. Yeah. Oh man, I miss those days. Yeah. It, our baby is the age of your oldest. Yes. And so I still, I want him to be a baby so bad, but he doesn't just do that like fall into you anymore thing, you know? And <laughs> I have to come ask him for a hug and my yeah. teenage son doesn't want to hug me at all. And I'm like, <laughs> back to me but as babies they were just I wore them constantly yeah. we nursed forever until they felt like being done or I was about to pop with the next baby yeah yeah <laughs> and it, it was just such a beautiful time like if I I know when I'm old that will be the time I want to go back to yeah like it's you're just like you're in the most beautiful season in life and you just don't even need anything to wreck your shine right now no for sure yeah, it's so great <laughs> all right well thanks so much bethany yeah, again yes, bethany. Really you. Appreciate it. Y'all you the best. thank you so much <laughs> can't wait to hear what this next year has in store i keep falling in this chair what this next year has in store for you that you have been really fun to follow on instagram and i'm so Aww, glad I, I, everybody needs to go follow you because it's uh. so encouraging and like I don't know. You'll post stuff about snacks, and I'm like, yeah, we shouldn't be eating those. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's Oops, sorry. A no, it's bit encouraging. Of like the junk food, please. It's encouraging. Like I literally put the veggie straws back when I was. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Someone, I, someone I was actually like, not put veggies. some in my goodie bag as I arrived at the hotel here, and I was like, read the ingredients. I'm like, no, please, no. <laughs> I was at the grocery store and I grabbed okay, them. Okay, let's then- finish this off because I always like to encourage people in their health, and. It's hard. You got to filter through social media. But if you look up how vegetable oil is made, you'll know you should not be consuming it. So go on YouTube and Google search, how is canola oil made? It's strained through hexane. It goes through all this machinery. It's really like not supposed to be eaten. And the history of like some of these vegetable oils it used to be an ingredient that went in paint and then they found a new ingredient that they preferred for the paint and then they started like but they already had this production of all this vegetable oil so then they started adding it into the food and while sugar has a super bad rap i actually think vegetable oil is what's causing heart disease and uh, alzheimer's and a lot of these um modern day diseases that are way more rampant than they used to be and if you look at the uh, history of health you can see as soon as they started adding vegetable oils in those particular disease alzheimer's and heart disease started going way crazier and if you start to look in all the ingredients of anything that's just not natural from the earth um it all has vegetable oil. You, like you, it's hard to escape it. And so once you become aware mm-hmm. and you start looking, you're like, whoa, this is in everything. Why yeah. is it in everything? And is this supposed to be eaten? And so like there used to be a campaign too, anti-butter, but people have been eating yeah. butter from the beginning right. of a time. Yep. Mm-hmm. And butter was never really like a big issue. And yes, there's people lactose intolerant, but I think it's because our guts are not as healthy as they used to be. So you want to heal your gut, say no to the canola and vegetable mm-hmm. oils, and your family will be like that much more healthy. And so Love it. you guys got this. I yeah, just like, do we can talk about health. I love like, that. That's my thing yep. is like, I really want my family to be mm-hmm. healthy and 
um, myself. I want to age well so that like when I have grandkids, I'm like crawling on the ground and teaching uh, them how to surf, you yeah. know, versus like sitting, you know, being stuck somewhere. So what does your diet so, look like for the most part? What is it you're consuming? Um, I mean, we like, we eat everything, but we just eat like real food, mm. no processed stuff. So for example, like breakfast, like my favorite breakfast, if I'm in charge, I'm making crepes with like um, a little, a little flour, a little like cassava or like some sort of root, like potato, sweet potato, mm -hmm. and then a lot of eggs and we'll just make little crepes. Um, and we're not like super restrictive on sugar. I'm kind of into, so like they'll still have like honey or maple syrup, like mm -hmm. real stuff, not mm -hmm. like these artificial sweeteners. Yeah. Because especially young children, like you watch them, they're moving all day long. They're burning that. Mm -hmm. So as long as they're getting protein to balance out the carbohydrates, like they're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. And even like, like my children have never been on an antibiotic yet because we eat super clean and healthy. Mm -hmm. And so they're a little more resilient with their sicknesses. And like, if we had to, we would mm -hmm. because antibiotics has its time and place. But True. I, as a child was given a lot of antibiotics under eight years old. So I had a lot of gut issues. Mm -hmm. And so trying to, um, I guess like I can only teach so much, but I would just say you have to advocate for yourself or the society will put you in your place mm -hmm. and so um i've just found like because i'm you know i come from a professional athlete background so i've been working at performing for so many years so i did a lot of my own research and i, I got advice from experts along the way but at the end of the day, like the biggest advocate for myself was me. And the biggest advocate for my children is me. Absolutely. And the biggest yeah. advocate for my husband is me. And so yeah. it's cool though, because my husband's on board and yeah, he so. supports that. And I can trust that like if I'm not around, he's cooking up a good meal for the family. Do you guys or garden? If he goes to the grocery store. Right. He's coming He's not back bring with clean Cheetos. stuff every now and then. I'm like, hun, were you hungry shopping today? <laughs> Never got um, hungry. We have a lot of like fruit trees yeah. and we have a lot of food growing on our property, but we're not gardening at this okay. point. I think we might at some point in our lives, we've had gardens along the way, but we kind of travel a lot. And so it's kind of hard. Yeah, yeah. And my brother's a farmer. So we get like fresh milk from him nice. and we get fresh meat from him as well. So awesome. um, we get like good raw or like good red meat. Yeah. Like we know our animals. Yeah. So um, yeah, we eat everything, but not anything artificial or like processed. So every now and then we might have like a new minnows, which has like vegetable oils. And I'm not like super OCD about it, but we try to, for the most part, make that like a rare occasion. And we bake cookies and we like, my boys just big muffins the other day. Now that my nine-year-old's reading, he's like, I'm like, if you want to bake, you can, as long as you can read the recipe. Yeah. Yeah. So now he's like starting to bake. Oh, right on, fun. Right on. <laughs> that's always, uh, that's always powdery. <laughs> yeah. It's a chaos in the kitchen for sure, but I'm like, you guys got to clean it up too. Yeah. <laughs> it's so fun with it. And they are so proud of themselves when they yeah. do it. They accidentally put too much baking soda in the other day. So that was like, they were bummed, but. What was the one we had recently? Was it salt? It was salt instead of sugar. <laughs> oh, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> like, we still ate it. We tried to like, it's okay. Kira look. was like, how are the cookies, dad? Because he rates them whenever she makes the cookies. And he was like, mmm, mm. they taste like the ocean. We, we fed the muffins to our chickens. So oh, we fun. have chickens. So yeah. they can yeah. eat anything we don't eat. Our chickens got the cookies. Too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we were like, they're a little salty. <laughs> yeah, she put like three quarters cup of salt. <laughs> it's funny. But yeah, well, we won't keep you any longer. We yeah, appreciate so you so happy. much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank Thanks you. So Living in the new world Whiffing hard